meeting to order. Karen, if you can call the roll. President Furman? Present. Vice President Curry? Here. Alder Bennett? Alder Conklin? Present. Alder Figueroa Cole? Here. Alder Foster? Here. And Alder Heck may be joining us later um, if he's able. You have quorum. Thank you. It sounds like he's going to be joining us in 10 minutes. I don't know if I can um, speak that slowly. Um, so he may uh, end up just missing um, the interviews, um, looking at the rest of the agenda um, to see if we can accommodate it. If uh, All right. Um, sorry. So uh, if I get a motion for the minutes. Move to approve minutes. Second. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions, corrections, suggestions, comments on the minutes? Not seeing any, I'm going to assume approval by unanimous consent. And uh, we will move on to public comment. Um, the only public comment was uh, there is nobody registered for, for the general public comment, except for Alder Figaro Cole, but I believe she probably did that to get her uh, to get connected this evening, um, but we have no other registrants. Um, so we'll move on to disclosures and recusals. Do any members of the body have any disclosures or recusals uh, to make under the city's ethics code? Not seeing any, um, uh, not seeing other, other members join us yet. Um, All right, um, we'll go ahead and jump into the interview of candidates. Um, even though we are missing a few members, we do have enough for quorum and uh, we'll, we'll make do. So um, I'd like to welcome, we have two candidates here this evening. Um, CCEC members, you uh, are unfortunately very used to this process at this point. Um, the big uh, difference this evening um, from some of the previous is that we'll only be doing one round. Um, and one of the um, choices um, when you use your uh, voting software um, is if you guys decide that um, you would prefer to leave the seat vacant, that can be a choice. I know in our previous discussions at the Common Council Executive Committee, um, there was some, um, uh, uh, we were split on whether or not we did want to appoint somebody with remaining time um, or um, actually uh, do this new round. Um, obviously, we're doing this new round, um, but we still have the option of uh, leaving uh, the seat vacant, if that's um, what, what this uh, committee wishes to recommend, uh, then the council can make a choice. Um, so with that in mind, um, uh, that's my quick introduction. All the candidates were provided their questions before. And these questions are the same questions we've been using for all of our vacancies. Um, I'm hoping um, the people that um, are participating this evening that don't have their camera on, if they can at least turn their camera on when they are asking their question, that would be helpful. Um, and uh, we are, we are going to start with Dorothy. Dorothy, um, uh, are you still with us? Go ahead and click uh, the uh, okay, uh, I'm here. video button and go ahead and start up your video oh, again. And I should start the video. Okay. Okay, I'm here. Hi, Dorothy. Welcome. Um, uh, we will be, uh, you will have um, approximately five minutes per question. Um, there are six questions. Um, uh, they were provided to you beforehand, and uh, I'm going to kick it off um, by asking you the first question, um, which is describe your involvement in civic activities. Uh, what do you know about this position, and why did you decide to apply? Well, I was on the Common Council from 1993 to 2003. And so I'm very familiar with what we do, except you guys do everything different now. We never had, of course, this type of thing. But um, I was consul, consul pro tem from uh, 1999 to 201 and count no, to 20,000, I'm sorry. And then I was council president from 20 to 201. Great, thank you. Um, next question. Um, do you not want the, what um, I was involved got, in prior? Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. You still oh, have I don't, time. Oh, I um, mean, I can do it you're, because you're it was one of the continue. questions. 
Okay, thank you. Prior to serving on the Common Council, I volunteered at Central Wisconsin Center over 30 years serving as president of the auxiliary for several years. I was active in the Northside Community Council for over 10 years, and I served 10 years on the Alcohol License Review Committee. I was appointed by uh, then Mayor Paul Soglin. Since retiring, I applied and we received a 5013C for the Warner Park Community Recreation Center. That place is really dear to my heart. And um, the Circle of Friends, uh, we raised money. And, uh, and I type, I sent you my answers and I put rise, but we raised money for the center. And um, I volunteer in the summer times at Vera Court's uh, Reading Buddies program. So that's, I guess, that I... Is all I have for that one. And then, um, and I think you also ask, why did you decide to apply for this position? I'm very concerned with the 12th district not having a voice. Uh, thank you, Dorothy. Um, our next question, um, I do not actually have my list up. Who, who was going to say that? I think it, it is... Do, does, does anybody know who was asking the next question? It was supposed it, to be Alder Bennett. Okay, um, Alder Heck, can you go ahead and ask the next question? Totally putting you on the spot. It's going to take me a while to get oriented. Okay, I'll go ahead and ask it. Uh, that's fine. Um, welcome, Alder Heck. Um, Dorothy, your next question, um, as you see, we're, we're, we're juggling with, uh, with attendance, um, uh, is what knowledge, skills, and resources do you already possess that will help you become an effective Alder? I served on several committees and boards, including the Board of Estimates, Common Council Organizational Committee, which is now you, CC uh, Executive Committee, uh, the Community Development Block Grant, Daycare Advisory Board, CARE, Core Oversight Committee, Dane County Coordinating Council, Fair Share Housing Work Group, Joint Committee on Community Centers, Madison City Arts, Monona Terrace Headquarters, Hotel Advisory Committee, Committee, Neighborhood Resource Team, Park Commission, Parks, MSCR Study Group, Rhythm and Booms Planning Committee, Strate Strategic Planning Committee, Warner Park Community Recreation Center Advisory Board, CCOC Subcommittee on Framework, and CCOC Subcommittee on Public Input and Access. And that's a common council um, committee is similar to what you have right now. Um, the Ice Arena Study Committee, Redistricting Committee, Ad Hoc Oversight Committee, excuse me, ad hoc, ad hoc oversight committee for intercity rail, facility programs and fee committees of park commission, pedestrian bicycle motor vehicle commission, and the common council legislative committee. It's good to see that we've always had tons of committees as a city. That has not, not changed. <laughs> we tried to get rid of a whole bunch of them when I was council president. Boy. And so we all agreed. We took them to the council and nobody on the, none of those alders want any committee that they were on pulled. Isn't that, that's the way it goes. So you'll never get rid of them. <laughs> we're, we're trying to, we've been trying as well. Are there any clarifying questions that anybody has um, based on uh, that? Um, we did not do that with the first one. Um, I'll ask once again, um, I guess, uh, at least at the end, if anybody has clarifying questions about uh, any of the questions. Um, so just take a quick note if you if there was something you wanted to follow up with uh, that Dorothy said that you wanted to go a little bit more detail on. Um, I do know who our next question comes from, and it's Alder Conklin. Alder Conklin, go ahead. Thank you so much. Hi, Dorothy. Hi. I'm getting to, I like to see your faces and put them so I know who's who. Well, I'm here, Alder Conklin. Uh -huh. um, please describe the ways you practice and demonstrate equity and inclusion and how you would model these practices in this assignment. Please provide an example of measure you have taken to further your knowledge of equity, inclusion, and racial justice. Well, equity and inclusion 
inclusion has always been a top priority of mine. I live on the north side. And so we want to include everyone. And when we were working on um, the Warner Park Community Recreation, that was built in 1999. Of course, I was on that board. And if any of you are aware with the 12th District and Warner Park, you will know that it was very important to bring the neighborhoods all together, rich and poor, black and white, uh, low and high income, everything, because we have such a mixture of neighborhood centers. And so our mission statement uh, that we came up with, that it will be a gathering place which provides an, an innovative growth and enrichment opportunities for the Madison community and connects people of all ages, races, and cultural backgrounds. And the mission statement, not only do we have it, but it has measurable goals. And as far as I know, I haven't checked recently, and maybe COVID, it was a problem, but it has always met those goals. We got HUD funding for the center, and it was very important that we served, you know, an 80, you know, a certain percentage of lower income people. And after the HUD funding, it was paid for in 10 years. We said we still want to do that because our center, it's, it's a wonderful center, and I hope all of you come over and visit it someday. It's wonderful. Um, oh, I know. And what would I, was there a second part to that question? And what would I do now? Yeah, it was kind of, um, what did you, what was okay. your examples and of measures that you've taken? Um, if you wanted to elaborate more on that. And it's it said, what would I do now? I would work with every alder. I think it's so very important that we all work together and that we support one another. For instance, I don't know your traffic in, in, problems over in your district. I know I'm in the north side. And so I always relied on the other alders. And if any of you, <clears throat> excuse me, have a... Uh, something that you need help with. I, I'm here. I, I, I work with everyone. And okay. Oh, and oh, I, and I think it said, what have I done? I read the racial equity and social justice initiative, and I agree with most of it. The only one I kind of is that we want kids prepared for jobs. Well, the problem is on the north side, and it may be on the south side, I'm sure too. Some of our schools can't read at some in, in the third grade. There, I mean, we're talking about 37 percent, and so. We got to, every kid has got to learn to read, and we've got to somehow or other work with a school district, and it's important that all kids learn to read. Otherwise, I agree with it. I mean, I don't Thank disagree. It just it didn't say that. I would have liked to add that to it. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, our next question um, will come from Alder Foster. Good evening, Dorothy. Um, what are some of the critical issues facing District 12, and what are some of the critical issues facing the city? Well, the contamination of the Oscar Mayer property is certainly a big uh, problem. And I live in the Sherman Neighborhood Association um, area, and so we talk about it a lot. And then the, the need for mixed income housing, not placing all the lowest income people all in one spot, because that is, is going to be a problem someday if we don't get the help they need. The need for market rate housing and, and the middle that, and housing that the middle class can afford. Because a lot of our middle class, uh, that live on the north side really, uh, the property taxes, everything's gone up so high. Well, of course, you know, purchasing stuff has gone up high too. And, um, we have a problem at the Oscar Apartments. Those were just built. And that is market rate. That is a mixed one. So it was perfect, wonderful. And they don't have any management. And I have a lady that works on the four, lives on the fourth floor that the elevators aren't working. She has a heart problem. She's been staying in her apartment. And so that's got to be addressed. And actually, I saw it on next door. And I said, you know, call building inspection. They don't have an alder to call. So they have to, building inspection is the place to go. And hopefully they have done that. And then the proposed development at the Fleen House at 1617 Sherman Avenue. Um, yeah, that's going to be coming up, I think, in February. 
And speeding on East Washington and North Port and Packers is always a problem. Um, and the Hawthorne Truex neighborhood plan will be coming up January 24th. They'll, they'll be having their first, I think, staff meeting. I just saw it today. I don't know anything about it at this point in time, but I know there we did several when I was older. And then the tiny house villages, um, we support them because a lot of people cannot afford housing and they can't live with a bunch of people. They need to have their own kind of room. But um, over on Aberg, uh, they were pretty, a lot of trash was out a lot of times. And Brenda has cleaned it up or Occupy. Madison has cleaned it up now. But um, Wooden houses should have been started to be in built to replace the canvas ones that are there, and they haven't started. So we got to get those done because they're supposed to be done by the summer of 23. I don't think they will be, but if we can get them done by next winter, it would be wonderful. So that's just a few of the things, you know, you know, all the big ones, I'm sure, in the city. Thank you, Dorothy. Our next question will be from Alder Figueroa Cole. Thank you, Cher. Um, hello. Um, so my question um, is kind of simple. You received a lot of feedback from residents surrounding the project in the district. Your general sense is 60% are against the project and 40% are for it. How do you balance public feedback against policies, goals, and priorities and what steps do you take into consideration to arrive at your position? Well, I can tell you what I did when I was an alder. I usually listen to the 60% because that's what I was elected to represent the entire district, but you have, you listen to everyone. And if I found it was something that was really needed, but you know, 40%, was or sixty percent was having a problem with it. I usually would go and to all the neighborhood meetings. I would go to any other meeting. I'd make myself where I could email and correspond with them to try to get them to go along. And you know what they do? Sometimes they don't understand why a certain whatever we're doing is so very important to the city. And so, you know, you just have to do what you have to do to get it done. But normally I'd go with, the, you know, the 60%. Now, if you're talking about 47% <laughs> and 53, well, you know, that's a little different too. Thank you. Our next question is from Vice President Curry. Good evening, Dorothy. Sorry, it took me a little while to find my unmute button. How do you reach District 12 residents who are not engaged in traditional ways like neighborhood associations? Yes, I know. And neighborhood associations, I absolutely love them. But a lot of times no one comes to them until there is a big problem. And the Sherman Neighborhood Association the other night had one of its biggest attendants because of the Oscar Mayer and the problems and the concerns. But, um, you know, what, what I always did, I'm out in the community almost every day now, so I hear lots of things. And um, I I meet people, I'm in the grocery store and local restaurants, I'm a North Sider, and also at the Warner Park Community Recreation Center, I'm over there three or four days a week. So I see lots of people, I'm in a couple of classes over there. And then I have an extensive email list. So I would keep emailing uh, and we just have to find ways to get people in, um, I believe in neighborhood associations. I think they are absolutely fantastic, but uh, I mean, maybe you have different results than what we had, but our neighborhood associations, the uh, membership is going down on the north side right now. So, you know, it, it is just, you just try to reach out however you can. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, are there any members of the Common Council Executive Committee or any other alders that are here with us this evening that have uh, clarifying questions? Not new questions, but something that they heard that they wish to be clarified. 
All right. Uh, not seeing any. Um, thank you again, Dorothy. Um, we're going to interview our next candidate, and uh, then we will uh, take a vote, and uh, we'll let you know uh, what 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 our recommendation will be. Well, thank you very much. I think the way you're doing this is fantastic. To for you to appoint an alder to fill this little space. Um, you know, that doesn't work. So I think this way, someone that is not running is a good way to do it. So thank you. Thank you now Dorothy. I should mute myself, right? Yes, thank you. Barbara, welcome. Um, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself and share your video. One and the other one. Start my video. Yeah, Barbara, we can see you. Welcome. Okay, hold on just one second. Okay, can you see me now? Oh, looks like I'm not live anymore. Can yeah, you, you're, you seem frozen. I we see a frozen image of you. I don't know if you want to stop your video and start it again. Stop and now start again. That seems to have done the trick. Oh, good going. Welcome. Um, Hi. Uh, you just saw how the interview process works. We're going to jump right into it. The first question uh, will be from me, um, and it will be, uh, describe your involvement in civic activities. What do you know about this position, and why did you decide to apply for this position? Well, first, I want to thank you for ha having this committee meeting, and I think it's really important part of democracy, really well at work to have this kind of thing happening. I think it's very important to have representation for the District 12. And I'm, I'm really excited, actually. I'm very excited and, and looking forward to possibly be the candidate for, I mean, be the representative for District 12. Um, I've been living in Madison for the last 42 years of my life. I've uh, lived in the Emerson, Emerson East neighborhood all that time. And I know the district really well. I know the people really well, although things do come and go. People come and go. Um, I have previously served on the Madison City Council for six years from 1995 to 2001. I entered the same year as Mike Drevere. <laughs> and then I had some years off and then um, I was asked to join the, um, the remaining term of, and then it went from there into a full term uh, on the Dane County Board of Supervisors. And I served on that body for six years also. So I kind of have a lot that I know about local government, albeit it's in the past. There are a lot of things that have changed, and I'm really looking forward to, to learning about all those changes and working together with everyone. My civic activities are really vast and overly, overly numerous. So just to mention some things, um, I'm passionate about music. I'm, I was a co-founder of Make Music Madison. Um, I sing in the James Reeb Unitarian Choir. Um, I've, I go to all the multicultural festivities in the summertime and participate in all of those. Um, I, um, I've also been very involved in WORT radio. I served in, on that, in that radio station for several years until I decided to run for city council in 1995. Looks like I'm shaky. Can you hear me at least? Looks like I'm we can hear you. Uh, it, it, there is a weird shake, but um, uh, you, you may uh, your video may be paused. Um, so, but oh, there we go. You're back. You're better. I'm back. Okay. Go ahead. But we 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 heard you loud and clear, though. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I have two grandchildren who live here. Um, my we have our son. He used to be on the Dane County Board of Supervisors. Also, I have two grandchildren: one ten-year-old boy and one six-year-old uh, grandchild girl. And I spend a lot of time with them. We have a lot of fun playing and working together. And they're very creative and wonderful. And I just adore them. And uh, I want to try to make Madison an even better place for them growing up. So if I can do it in this way, I'd, I'd really like to do that. Um, I've served on the, the county ADRC, Aging and Disability Resource Center, and the Wisconsin ACLU board. Um, I'm still communicating, trying to communicate um, work with people that are concerning the F-35s, which is a done deal, but, but there's still many, many concerns about it, and, and I'm trying to help out in that, in that regard. Um, I've also been, I mentioned WORT, I've 
WYRU is all, as well our community access TV station and very involved with them. And um, so I have, the, I have the experience and knowledge of being on the council and being on the county board. And I decided to run because I was asked and I thought it was a very good time to come in for three months and try to help do my part. I thought it was very, very important, crucially important that District 12 has a representative. And I would like to serve in that capacity for the next three months. Um, I don't know what else to tell you, except that I, I've been very actively involved. Um, one thing that I, I want to pursue, and I've mentioned to some people already, is that this, it's an issue that's very, very uh, close to me. And it's having to do with home health care services. And this is a huge, huge crisis, not only in Madison, not only in Dayton County, but in all of Wisconsin and all the other states nationally. People cannot, like myself, cannot find people to help them as personal care workers or caregivers. There are no, there's no one in out there that is interested in this type of job. And there has to be some kind of communication and work, very, very strong work in this area because it allows people like me and people who are elderly to live in the community, to continue living in our homes, and living in the community and being active members of the community. And otherwise, we I would be forced into a nursing home or uh, assisted living facility it would not be home and it would not, I wouldn't have the freedoms of participating in the community the way I do now. Uh, it's incredibly important because people, I I would like to be able to focus on it on the city council level because it's so incredibly, it's such a crucial crisis. It's a huge crisis and I can't overstate it, but I will be talking to everybody more about that because it's so incredibly important and it, it's, it's a problem, a huge problem. So those are some of the, my activities and I don't know if you would like to know more about any of that. I would. Uh, that, that, that's good. You're, you're a little over five minutes. So we're going to move on to the next question. And um, uh, I'm, uh, Alder Bennett, do you, are you with us? Do you want to ask the question or would you like Alder Heck to do it? Hi, sorry. Um, can, can Alder Heck do it? I'm, you can. I'm, in, I'm listening. I just have things. Yep. Yep. Alder Heck, go ahead. I can do that. Uh, good evening, Barbara. Um, what knowledge, skills, and resources do you already possess that will help you become an effective interim alder? Well, um, I have all the skills that uh, and expertise of having been on the council already for six years and also on the Dane County Board. I, have, I was part of all those going to meetings, meetings, gazillion of meetings all the time that we're all really well aware of. I, I have experience in working with city staff, with my constituency, um, going to the meetings that are very important, um, including city committee meetings and district meetings, meetings with residents and meeting with city staff. I've gone through this before and I want would like to learn the new ropes of being on the council now with all this, but I do have those, that knowledge and skills that I already um, have possessed since since I was alder and Dane County Board Supervisor. And um, so I know what it's like, and I'm ready for three months <laughs> of working on it. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, our next question will be from um, Alder Conklin. Hi, Barb. Hi. I don't know if so, I see you. Oh, there you I see you now. Hi. Tara. Hello. Hi. Um, please describe the way you practice and demonstrate equity and inclusion and how you would model these practices in this assignment. Please provide an example of measure you have taken to further your knowledge of equity, inclusion, and racial justice. Well, I have one thing that's very, very close to my life that I am involved in that, that um, is dealing with equity and inclusion constantly and that those are the people who help me. These are the people who come into my home and help me with my personal cares, both in the mornings and in the evenings. I've had people from all over the world. It's amazing. This is a wonderful part of my life and something that I'd like to be able to continue with this crisis that I just mentioned. But I've had women from 
West Africa. I've had women from Central America, South America, Tibet, um, um, all parts of different parts of the world. And I just lost a wonderful worker who is from is from Tibet. She's African. She's American, but she's at Tibetan origin. I have all this cultural richness that is coming to my life because of these people. And I deal with them on a daily basis. They come in my home. They come in my bedroom. They go in my closets. They're a real integral part of my, my personal life. And we get to talk to each other. To um, Oh, I'm shaking there. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. It looks like I'm getting spastic. <laughs> anyway, that's really strange. This is, oh. Anyway, um, I'm trying to get myself looking right again. I'm still shaking the start video. Yeah. Let's see if this is, is this better. Yes, I'm not shaking. I'm not having a, um, so anyway, the um, what was I speaking about? Um, measures I've taken to for equity and inclusion. I was when I was on the city council. I was on the Equal Opportunities Commission. I served on that body for the long term, and I dealt specifically with um, the disparities in the African American community what it had to do with traffic stops by the police for, and the disparity, a huge disparity. We, we um, studied that, we made recommendations. I'm, I, um, I've worked with seminars, workshops, and I've worked together with multicultural organizations like Centro Hispano, um, Just Dang, the ADRC, Aging and Disability Resource Center, been and I'm now involved in the Wisconsin Poor People's Campaign. So this is something that's very, very important and 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 for me. I when I was on the council, I worked on and was helped put together the living rate wage ordinance, which is for people who are at low income. And um, uh, I um, I'm just seeing in my notes if I forgot anything, but. I think those are, um, I think there's more to tell you, but that's what I have for now. And But I w welcome any questions you might have, too. Um, thank you, Barbara. We're going to go on to the next question, um, and that's from uh, Alder Foster. Alder Foster, go ahead. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Grant. Uh, critical issues facing District 12 uh, and the rest of the city. Well, the, the, all the ones that Dorothy talked about, the developments are, you know, on the high list for this. Uh, the um, development going on at, at Sherman Avenue um, with um, the WPS building there and neighbors wanting, thinking that they, they want to keep that as a historic district, although it doesn't have that um, that distinction right now. And, um, and there's concerns, it's a controversial issue. It so would be a large area to develop. Um, but there are also other developments as well. The Oscar Meyer site, I'm glad Dorothy mentioned contamination there. It's a very strong, important problem there. Um, and the Rethke site next to Oscar Meyer, this is something that's an issue. And uh, the Oscar apartments too, there is, it, it needs to be addressed, the issues there, because people are having big problems there and there are a lot of police calls and and there is the management needs to be um, brought to speed with what's happening and I'd be happy to do that with the residents and uh, on other issues um, passenger rail is huge hugely important and I know there are a couple sites being looked at for possible stations in district 12 but regardless wherever it is that passenger rail is huge enormous and wonderful it needs to come to Madison um, and um, the TOD, Transit Oriented Development Corridors, though those are all, that's a big issue on the city level. They, they need to, there needs to be a lot of work on that. And there is, I know now, you know, East Washington Avenue in my district is has been primed to do that and it has been working on that for a while. And um, also I've heard about Sherman Avenue also being possibly a TOD district. And this is very important because we need to have um, good transportation in our in our city and, and good public transportation with the, the buses and the rail coming and um, and having traffic be, be flowing more more in better in better ways. 
and I guess <laughs> um, the um, I just was thinking of something. Um, uh, but uh, those are, and let me see if I if I had something else. Uh, those are big city issues. Um, the F thirty five continue to be a problem, and I I really would like to keep working with. I know it's a, it's it's done, and there's not much we can do, but there needs to be mitigation with what's happening and how it's going to affect the residents living. And I'm part of that. The District 12 is very, very strongly um, affected by the F-35s and that um, it needs to be worked on more and more to make it the best possible situation for people who are affected by the, by the problem. Um, and I, I don't know, there might, I'm sure there are other things I can't think of them right now. Oh, can we get the, Again. Barbara, uh, Barbara, thank you. Um, uh, your video, uh, we heard you perfectly, um, but yeah, your video is being a little weird again. Um, yeah. You're welcome to try starting and stopping it again. Um, and in the meantime, um, Alder Figueroa Cole uh, has the next question for you. Alder Figueroa Cole, you're muted. Thank you. Um, hi, Barbara. So my question is a little bit long. You're, you receive a lot of feedback from residents surrounding a project in the district. Your general sense is that 60% are against the project and 40% are for it. How do you balance public feedback against policies, goals, and priorities? What steps do you take into consideration to arrive at your position? Well, I, um, I know this to be true. It happened um, when I was in my council previously, I had a lot of issues like this, similar to this, with 60, 40 and that kind of issue. Um, I, I think it's very, it's, it's crucially important to get full information for, and, and for the background of each um, um, issue that is for any project. Um, listen, listen, seeing what the residents have said, um, listening to the city staff, getting as much information as possible on the background and where people stand now, the, the residents, the city, and um, I think weighing the positive and negatives are, are very difficult, but they need to be addressed and looked at all the conversations, the discussions that have happened and um, the overriding issues, see if any of those can be resolved or mitigated in any way to make it best for all. I think the the main goal is the overall benefit of the product, weighing them positives and the negatives, and talk is the key thing, and information from residents, staff, all the parts that are involved to, to see what will be the best overall outcome. And my thing is, I'm spazzing out again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that's how I would say. If you have any other question about that, I'd be happy to try to answer it. But I think it's mainly communication, learning the background, here, listening. Listening is the key word to residents, to city staff, gathering all the information possible. And, you know, as, as much full disclosure as possible about uh, all the angles and issues being raised and trying to come to the best kind of uh, overall um, effect for the city and the district. They're both important, what, how the city develops and how the district develops. And they have to really be taking stride both, both aspects if they are conflicting with each other and try to have those issues worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our uh, last question will be from Vice President Curry. Hi, Barbara. Hi. How do you reach District 12 residents who are not engaged in traditional ways like neighborhood associations? Well, um, that's always a, something that's a daunting task, but um, I would use neighborhood e-lists. The different neighborhoods have different email lists for the constituency of the residents who live there and try to communicate through that outlet, like next door or um, other email lists of specific people in the neighborhoods and who want to communicate together with each other. I would be part of that using that. Also meeting with constituents. 
I'm, I'm always ready to meet with people and hear about um, their interests and, um, and their problems and issues. Um, I would use the city district 12 blog because I, I saw that my predecessor, Syed, did a lot of work in that way. And I would like to continue that and, and get out a lot of information and receive information through that city blog. Telephone exchanges. You know, anything that's possible to use to try to reach people, have them be able to reach me, uh, I will try. You know, neighborhood associations, I can always tell people about a meeting that might be happening and they maybe they don't do that regularly, but they might go to one if they know that the issue that they're concerned about is going to be addressed at that particular meeting. Um, and uh, I don't know, any way I can find <laughs> Thank you, Barbara, very much. Um, are there any um, questions, uh, uh, clarifying questions, not new questions, but clarifying questions based on anything that you heard from Barbara's answers from any of the alders on CCEC or any of the other alders that are here with us this evening? Okay, not seeing any. Um, Barbara, we're going to take a, a brief pause. Um, Barbara and Dorothy will both would be to, well, just to let you know, we're going to take a brief pause now to do um, uh, 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 fill out our uh, ranking and uh, let you folks know uh, what what our uh, recommendation will be. Um, uh, CCEC Alder, so you know, um, you should have all received um, an, an, uh, an email from um, from Pivot. Um, um, I believe it was sent out uh, uh, early afternoon. Um, if anybody needs me to resend it, I can. Um, information as a reminder is in that email on how to vote, how you drag people's names up to the the, the top so you can rank them and then rank them in the order um, that you wish to rank them in and uh, then click the reviewed button. Um, and once that's all set, um, we have everybody's vote. I will go ahead and announce what our recommendation will be. All right, um, President Furman, where did you send it again? I'm looking for it. It is, it is sent to your district aid account, uh, Alder Bennett. Um, uh, if I, I could tell you um, when I received mine, it would have been around the same time. Should have received it around. From who, like, can I just click? Yeah, yeah, give me one. Um, it would have been uh, uh, received at uh, about uh, 1.59 p.m. Um, from Pivot Libre. Oh, okay, got it, thank you. President Furman, I don't believe I received that email, but uh, I got one at 544, so I'm good there. Do we have to reset our password? Is, uh, if, you can't, if you can't get in, yes, but your whatever password you used last time we used the vacancy tool um, would be the same password, but if that's not working, go ahead and reset it. Uh, oh, maybe I know it. Uh, President Furman, I received the link and I'm in, but I'm not seeing an option for District 12. Just go ahead, go ahead and refresh the page again and it should show up. It's a weird, weird little bug that happens at times. I'm log, I'm log back in. Can you please confirm that you received my vote? Um, I can uh, confirm that in a second. Alder Figaro call. Yep. Um, so so far, um, it, it's only uh, District uh, Nine and Sixteen. I have not received votes from yet. Um, so. President Furman. Go ahead, Alder Conklin. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's the problem. I don't have District 12 on my election things. Yeah, so just cl click the refresh button on your browser and, and it should show up. It's not. Then try no. clicking on clicking on the link in the email again and see let if that see, comes up. Let me see, let me see. <clears throat> yeah. 
Looks like you're all set, Alder Conklin, uh, as far as seeing the ballot. Um, so go ahead and take your time to vote. And it looks like Vice President oh, Curry no. also can see the ballot. Okay. So okay. Um, once I've got their votes, I will tabulate the, re the, the recommendation. President Furman, did you get mine? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you everybody for voting. It does look like I have everybody's votes. Um, Okay, um, so I uh, before I announce the results, I really do want to thank um, both Dorothy and Barbara for for your past service. Um, I want to thank you both for uh, being willing to come come out of Alder retirement and jump back into the fire. Um, putting yourself up for for this is is certainly not easy, um, and uh, you know answering our questions tonight is certainly not easy. I've been there in the past, uh, having filled a vacancy. So really, really do appreciate uh, both of you um, coming forward and um, participating this evening. Um, I have um, tallied the results of of the. Um, of the Common Council Executive Committee, um, and uh, we are going to be recommending um, Barbara Vetter to fill the position. So um, again, I want to thank you both so much for applying. Um, Barbara, we will be in touch um, about uh, what the next steps are. Um, uh, you know, I, I, what I do in these in the past is uh, recommend that that folks join committees. You guys have put in, um, Dorothy, you have put in a ton of time. Um, but uh, as always, you are welcome to apply to committees if you wish to continue to be involved. And um, certainly, don't be shy um, reaching out to to you know your alder and all alders um, with questions, comments, concerns, and suggestions. So, um, thank you so much um, again, and um, we will move on to the rest of our agenda. Um, so uh, the the next item on our agenda um, would be um, the the actual referral that we have um, that would appoint this position. Um, so uh, you know the that that is legislative file um, seven four eight nine four. Um, if there is um, is there any objection with me adding everybody's name um, that's here this evening as a sponsor um, for that? I don't see any objection. Um, is there any? Uh, Questions, comments um, uh, on on uh, the the appointment um, item. Unless I see a hand that says other, that says otherwise, I'm going to assume unanimous consent. And um, sorry, President Furman, do we need a motion? Uh, yes, I do need a motion. Sorry, yep. Um, a little bit, um, little not, not in the not in the flow yet. So, um, who wants to make a motion uh, to appoint um, Barbara as the uh, re recommended uh, District Twelve Alder? Move to appoint uh, Alder Barbara. Bennett. Can I get a second? And Vice President Curry with a second. Great. Um, now that we actually have uh, something that we can put in the meeting minute notes, if there's, as long as there's no objection, I'm going to assume unanimous consent, and we will move on to the additional items on tonight's agenda. Um, so the, the next item on our agenda is uh, legislative file 75055, amending the 2023 adopted operating budget to real, reallocate $15,000 within the Common Council 2023 operating budget for intern stipends. Um, the sponsor, do we have a sponsor that's here with us this evening? Um, uh, nope, um, it does not appear we do. Um, Karen, do you wanna talk about this item um, very briefly? Sure. So uh, this item would expand the uh, existing 2023 budget for interns from the current amount of $250 per alder to um, $1,000 per alder. Um, so it would be building on the program that we are currently getting ready for you all to, to use. 
Thank you. And um, uh, the only other thing that I would just add as an introduction to that would be that the money is coming from um, what would what would have been the uh, money that was allocated towards an older pay increase, which was not approved by the uh, enough of the Common Council to take effect. So that's where the budgetary funds come from. Um, are there any questions for staff on this item? Alder Figueroa Cole, go ahead. Thank you. Hey, Karen. I guess I'm I'm a little bit confused about the whole um the whole program. I thought that when we had the discussion about, about putting money on our accounts, individual accounts, that was meant just as a way to um this as a way of disperse the funds, but the program itself was just one pocket of money. Like it wasn't like I get two hundred dollars for my own personal then I thought that the whole idea was we have one bucket of money for interns and that the, those $200 of each of us was in that bucket. Can you please explain? Yes, yeah, so um, there was a lot of discussion leading up to that and CCEC ended up uh, directing to, to do uh, 250 to everybody's um, older expense accounts prioritized for an intern, but allowed to um, be used for other allowable expenses if the elder decided not to have an intern. So that's that money. Um, maybe I'm not sure if you, we have an office intern and that's for the summer and that's a separate bucket of money that's for the office for the intern, for the Aspire intern. I'm not sure if if you're thinking of that one as well. That's but what I was thinking. I didn't realize. That one's still there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that the $250, $250 was just, you know, just an allocation on the books, but we will group it all together to, to hire interns, not for individual, but like interns to serve for the council, not for each person. So I was, I guess I was confused about that. Yeah, the, yes, that, that's correct. We have the Aspire uh, intern for the office in the summer, separate money, completely different story. This one, um, this amendment would increase the stipend amounts for the individual interns. Um, and and um, if you remember, we were talking, and, and I'm hoping in, in February to be able to bring back to you um, the plan for rolling this out, the Alder Intern Matching Program that we've been working on for um, a few months now. Uh, so we're going to have a framework for it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Alder. Alder Conklin. Thank you, Chair. So yeah, I think I have a little bit more of a clarifying question as well. So with this thousand dollars, is that added to the two hundred and fifty dollars, or is seven hundred and fifty added to the two fifty to make it a thousand? Seven fifty is added to the two fifty to make it a thousand. I am looking just to see and this. For, oh, oh sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. And I'm going. To, uh, I'm reading the the wording of the um, amendment, and this amendment would add 750 per older dedicated intern stipend. So this additional 750 per older would be um, for specifically for, for interns. So when we're saying like, okay, we have a thousand dollars for an intern, is that for? The full term is that for six months, like, and and how do we pay them according to the work that they may have done? I guess is that up to the individual alder, or is that something like we have to have written out in a contract before they start any work for us, or how is that going to work? So those are great questions, and this is the work that we've been doing to to build the program. Um, to give you some framework and guidance. And as it stands now, um, Katie, Katie Yeager was working on it. So I'll be picking that back up from her to um, bring to you. But as it stands now, the um, our document, we're going to be giving you kind of like agreement documents, suggestions, things to cover, um, ideas about that. And then there is some paperwork with HR that we would have to do to provide the money. Um, something new that came up that I'm intrigued by that I'm thinking about is the question of perhaps, let's say, several 
you know, two alders or three alders have a little bit of work they'd like an intern to do. So could they share an intern, for example? You know, this is something um, we've started to um, to think more about. And I, I'm feeling like putting this in as well, because, um, you know, it may be that you have five hours a, a week, but somebody else has 10 and that's a, a good amount together. Um, and then you could access two people's worth of, two alders worth of, of stipend if you chose to. Um, mm-hmm. I think the plan so far, and again, I, I, I think um, we're planning on having CCEC discuss this more or weigh in on it when we have something to show you. Um, I think the idea is that it's really alder driven in a lot of ways. And so you can decide how much of a stipend you want to offer and, you know, Maybe you want an intern for the summer. Maybe you want an intern for a month, maybe, you know, four months. You know, right now, the idea is because we don't have a lot of, um, the idea is that you'll be able to sort of dictate that and work that out with the person um, that would be coming on to to interview or um, intern for you. And uh, it would, it would really be up to you and, and working it out with them how you wanted to do the, the details. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alder Conklin. Uh, Alder Heck, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Question for Karen. I know that this program hasn't really been developed and you've been working on it, but uh, I'm I'm interested in knowing in your mind who would be managing Alder interns, Alders or council staff? So for the Alder intern program that we have conceptualized, uh, it would be Alders who would be responsible for the day-to-day management of their interns. Um, Council staff is responsible for the management of the council office intern. So the summer intern that we get, that's, that's, uh, that's our, um, we'll be managing that. But these, these really would be um, something that the Alders would do the day-to-day management of. And do you envision them being housed in council in the council office? So the design, as we have it so far, it doesn't um, it doesn't provide that type of of structure. It's um, it would rely on the intern to have their own computer um, to be able to do the the work that they need to do um, in consultation with the older. So um, I would imagine it would be remote or something. Maybe there are community spaces. Maybe an, an, an alder has a particular solution that they would like to implement. Um, I know that, um, not to put Alder Bennett on the spot, but Alder Bennett had an intern and um, they worked, unpaid intern, but they worked out that the, she was sort of the um, uh, pilot and, and um, kind of helped us generate the thoughts on on how could something like this be off you know structured or offered to the alders um, more than just individually as one-offs and so um oh it doesn't look like she is is here um anyway so that was how she had handled it so we were kind of starting from that that point and then we wanted to give you resources and documents and and then there's some uh there's some hr related okay. requirements so Thank you. That 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 answered my question. Thank you, Alder Heck. Are there any other questions for staff? Okay. Um, uh, I, we'll, we'll just jump in discussion. If somebody wants to make a motion, they're welcome to. But we could start with uh, Alder Foster. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, I'm not above this um i guess for a couple of, i just want to share some of those um number alder one foster um, alder foster internships themselves. Ald- alder foster um would you would you mind just stopping your video maybe that will help your audio is breaking up a bit yeah is, am i coming through any better here you are okay um so yeah I, i've got a couple concerns um with it um i think number one um internships themselves um often can be a little problematic. I think in a lot of contexts, they're a way to you know, either get unpaid or um, sort of very lowly paid labor, um, which is something that I, I kind of object to. Um, 
number two, I think when they're not actually um, labor and they're more of a sort of educational experience or or um, opportunity to get experience for a student or someone else, I think they actually take quite a bit of work um, to manage to do successfully. Um, I think that is something that is appropriate to have for the broader council where we have staff that are able to support those um, interns. I think it's, it can be a good learning um, opportunity and I think it's, a, it's an interesting place to, to give an opportunity um, to interns, but I think we should be realistic that it's um, likely gonna take as much um, paid support by other by staff to support those internships as we're going to get out of the interns themselves in terms of uh, of product and that's not always the case but I think in general in my experience that's how it works out I think the idea of having individual interns for individual alders um, is more problematic um, I, I I don't it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me you um, know in, in, in a number of ways. And I, I really, I think, objects to using the money that was budgeted um, for increased alder pay um, for this purpose. Um, I think we've got an agenda item coming up on our, our, our agenda yet today to talk about some other potential for better administrative or more administrative support for alders, which is something that I support. Um, this is something that uh, even those that did not support increased elder pay um, often used as the rationale is we don't need to pay elders more. We just need to make the job easier. Um, I'm looking forward to that conversation. Um, but at this point, I would not uh, support taking some of the money um, that was budgeted for uh, essentially for for improving the conditions of elders uh, towards this purpose. Because I think at the end of the day, um, it's, it's not going to work. And um, um, so, yeah, I, I would not support it. Thank you, Alder Foster. Any other um, comments uh, from members? Uh, Alder Heck, go ahead. Thanks. Um, I, I won't be supporting this either. I, I, I think from the, the answers that I received from my questions, it was pretty clear that this does have the potential to place undue burden on our, our council staff. And I, I also uh, don't see that in most circumstances, there would be a benefit to to having alders uh, ha having interns at this level of pay. So uh, I'll, I'll be voting no. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Heck. Any other discussion? Alder Tischler, go ahead. Yeah, thanks for uh, letting me speak. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm in favor of this only uh, because I think it could be an excellent opportunity for uh, especially students uh, who might get an opportunity to, uh, you know, my first entree into learning more about politics. Uh, UW has a lot of service learning opportunities, might tie in very nicely with, with, with those. So, uh, but that's, uh, that's, that's where I am, but I'm not sure I'm voting on this, but just wanted to add those, uh, wanted to add those comments. Appreciate that, Alder Tischler. Uh, any other comments? Vice President Curry, go ahead. Thank you. I didn't know my hand up the first time. Um, I'll be honest, I'm a little conflicted um, just due to my work with um, interns in my daytime job and supervising them. Um, while I agree with everything Alder Tischler and previous Alders said about the opportunities and, and exposing folks, especially young folks, um, to the council and the work, it is a lot of onboarding and work in the beginning um, to get someone up and rolling. And when talking about capacity and having, you know, another set of eyes or someone to be able to do some of the things to increase capacity, for instance, um, I guess I go back to my experience and it will vary, I think, alder by alder um, based on, you know, volume of things that are happening in the district, personality and communication styles. There's just a lot in the air. And um, <clears throat> I think I'm conflicted because I haven't yet seen the program rollout and I'm more interested in um, seeing that and being able to maybe provide guidance or things in there um, around some of those concerns. And um, I've missed questions, but I wanted to... Um, 
I had a question about what if alders don't utilize interns in this way and would they be able to utilize that money for their alder accounts? And I um, see Karen nodding her head. So it seems like the money would still be of use, which was another concern of mine. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was nodding because I, I, I could help. But I, I, actually, I if from the reading of this uh, amendment, it does seem that the 750 would be dedicated to supporting interns. I wanted to add one thing if I could on this. Is that all right? Um, I, I just want to... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think I'm pretty much done with my comment. If it's okay, I just wanted to to just say that I we, we will be... Because of the 250 that are in there, we're building this program. So we're already... Um, we're already on that that particular path. I just, unless something happens, I guess something could happen between now and then. But um, just want to make that clear that the program itself is still being developed. So I'll appreciate your feedback when we when we get that time. Thank you. And that will be an item for our future CCEC meeting. Um, Vice President Curry, um, and it, it, you're welcome to take the floor again if you wanted to add anything more. You're good. All right, Alder Madison, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I am in a retail store, so can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, thank you. So I just wanted to add my two cents, uh, uh, also to echo a lot of what uh, Alder Tischler shared, but as someone who manages, I think we have three altern our interns right now in my nine to five, and those interns are high school and college students, and I believe they get between $1,000 and $1,500 for the year. And one thing I just want to say is I'm more than willing to use myself to help folks flesh out what it looks like in the future, whether it's one on one, whether it's part of a committee or just working with folks in a coffee house and eating and whatever. But I do want to say that I, I, I encourage folks to think about their interns more project based, not trying to help them manage like they're just continuous work tasks daily. So maybe it is, rep you know, replying to um certain kinds of projects, like if there's a development happening and the intern is just responsible for managing communications and sending out things for that development. So I would just encourage you to support it because it is helpful. It does give folks experience, especially interns and young people of color who are very much sometimes just don't have that entryway into the kinds of spaces that we are all uh, presently sitting in. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Alder. Alder Foster, go ahead. I was going to make a motion to recommend place on file. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Alder Figueroa Cole with second. Uh, Alder Tischler, if you'd like to speak, um, where where we have discussion still, so you're welcome to 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 uh, yeah. uh, contribute more. You know, I, I just like the idea, uh, Alder. Uh, Madison had with with the project base and wondering if there's any way that uh, alders can combine the funds so that that a uh, an intern could could receive more money and that would also give the opportunity for alders to collaborate on a project that might spread across several districts so yeah I think based on um you know I um I think we we can certainly explore that more in the future um you know I think Karen had mentioned that that was one of the things that she was um definitely trying to um think about when they were looking to put together the parameters of uh the program with the existing money if additional money would be added um if we don't do it now um this certainly can come back um if there's money available um to to do it in the future um add more money to the pot uh Alder Figueroa Cole go ahead Um, two questions. One, if I leave the meeting, do you still have quorum? I'm supposed to be in parks right now, so I'm kind of multitasking here, and I can do. Uh, yeah, do you have quorum if I leave the? Yeah, we would have quorum. Okay, perfect. Okay, and so, thank you. And then, um, second, I mean, this is I am a bit um, not conflicted, but still confused because what we just discussed there is what I thought we were doing. I thought we were taking five thousand dollars to allocate. For a program on for um, interns for council, not this individualized thing, or you know, like we will have potentially twenty interns with two hundred and fifty dollars each, which doesn't which doesn't make any sense to be honest with you. So I support the alternative of putting this on file until you guys until the council office has a, a 
the opportunity to put a program together and vet it and figure out how we want to go about this. But initially, th that when I first supported this idea, I was in the on the mindset that we will group this money to get people opportunities to come to council and learn from us. Not this idea that now we're hearing that is a each person gets money for an intern. So that's why I will not be supporting the original um, um, request, but I'll support it, put it on file until until later time. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Um, any other discussion? The motion on the table is to place this on file. Um, I'm going to ask Karen to call the roll. Okay. Vice President Curry? No. Alder Bennett is not here. Alder Conklin? Come back to me, please. <clears throat> okay. Um, Alder Figueroa Cole? So this is to vote to put it on file? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Alder Foster? Aye. Alder Foster, aye. Alder Heck? Aye. Okay. Um, Alder Conklin? Aye. Okay. So with we've got four eyes and one no. President Furman, I think in this case you don't you don't vote because it wouldn't change the outcome. Right. Okay. All right. Um move on to the next item on our agenda, um, which is um uh, will hopefully be incredibly quick. Uh, legislative file 75158, Poet Laureate uh, request or po poetry, uh, po poetry recitation uh, schedule for the 2023 Common Council meeting, um, March 7th, June 6th, September 5th, December 5th. There are any questions, comments, concerns? Thank you, Alder Figueroa Cole. Have a good evening. Um, can I get a motion for this item? I make the motion to approve the poet schedule for 2023. Alder Foster, is that a second? Um, yep. All right. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll assume unanimous consent and move on to 75119. Um, I do want to point out um, that um, uh, Debbie is with us this evening and uh, sat through um, the discussion up to this point. Debbie, thank you so much for doing that. Um, I know this is a topic that Karen asked you to come and be available uh, to um, either answer questions or contribute. And so I just wanted to thank you for being here this evening um, and let and make it clear to everybody that you're here to um, uh, answer questions and possibly offer feedback. Um, and so um, this item, um, as Alder Foster pointed out, um, is on our agenda um, to talk about um, one possible use of the um, Alder pay um, uh, increase that was in the budget um, in order to um, lessen the load on Alders. Um, Alder Foster, would you like to talk about this a little bit? I know you and I kind of went back and forth on this. Do, I mean, you introduced it a little bit in your intern discussion, but um, you know, I, I, um, hopefully you can provide the group with some things to think about um, and, and talk about. Yeah, I'd be happy to, thanks. Um, so um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I, I've been, I think, really, really focused on trying to improve conditions for alders um, on the Common Council to make the job uh, easier, more manageable. Um, and um, when the um, the the ordinance um, didn't get the supermajority needed to pass to increase alder pay, which I was obviously very supportive of. Um, my thoughts turned to, um, as I mentioned before, this idea that um, well, we need to we need to put energy into making the role of alder easier, and. Um, I, that is something that I support. Um, I, I did not support that as a um, replacement for actually paying alders for doing the work that um, that they do. But I, as as I thought through, well, what would that actually look like? 
The number one thing that came up for me um, is increasing the, the level of administrative support that's available to alders. Um, I think of um, representatives in the state house, for example, um, who all have um, multiple staff and interns um, per each representative to really help manage, in that case, actively manage their email inbox and really be that first line of um, contact for uh, for constituent concerns, um, even though I, I believe they have a much lower volume of constituent um, emails and concerns than um, City of Madison alders do. And so um, I, I really started thinking about what would that look like? What would it take? Had some initial conversations with Karen. And um, I'm, I'm really interested in others' feedback. I didn't want to put a, pro act, a proposal forward um, without hearing from other folks and, and really ensuring that it's something that had some broader support. But, um, you know, as I reflect on, on my kind of three and a half years in this role, um, one of the things that really stands out for me is the amount of time that's required to answer emails and return phone calls from constituents. Um, probably 85 to 90 percent of the time um, for things that somebody else could help with, um, at least on that first pass. Um, so, um, you know, I sort of along with this, I've been an active supporter of working towards uh, a 311 system that, you know, if that were in place, could serve this function where we could uh, theoretically have uh, a, a system that's really readily available for residents to call or email or text to get all the answers they need to questions, to report issues, to get help with some you know very small issue um, that I think we all understand today instead is often coming to us individually as alders. Um, Debbie has um, done some of this work um, for myself and for other alders in the past, um, but it's it's been sort of rather ad hoc. And I know at least personally, I have not, um, I have I have certainly not given the um, the bulk of that work over there. And I've really tried to manage um, the majority of it on my own. So responding directly to constituents, as I've learned more and more about uh, you know which city staff to turn to. You know, directly forwarding emails there, um, but then running into issues with not having those staff respond and me getting stuck in the middle and having residents contact me again, um, or, or simply just being available via phone to answer the calls when they come in, um, getting voicemails, calling people back. So um, my thought with this is that we could potentially use the, the money that was avail that's available in the budget to hire an additional council staff person um, that really could be dedicated to doing a much higher level volume of this sort of work, um, potentially with a little bit more structure around it, where we could have alders um, really feel comfortable and confident to just forward, um, you know, emails that um, that somebody else could help with. Um, and, and have some processes in place to make sure that the resident feels good about it, that the alder's still in the loop um, as, as makes sense, um, but really be that, that sort of first line of contact and in a way maybe start to pilot this functionality of what a 311 system might look like. So that, I guess, in a nutshell is what I'm thinking um, at this point. But I know, you know, every alder's experience is different. Um, maybe some alders, you know, don't think that would be super helpful. Um, so really just wanted to kind of open it up for discussion here and, and hear from others about whether they think um, that would be a significant help to alders in the future if we had a kind of a dedicated resource to really, um, really be on point and take charge to, um, to, to work directly with residents that are contacting their alders. Thank you, Alder Foster. Um, do others have thoughts uh, or possible even questions of staff about this? Alder Vitiver, go ahead. Um, so I thought that I remembered that last year in the budget, we had set aside money for the 311 program and that that was really the purpose of this was to have a program that was a central place for residents to ask the questions that they're often asking us. What happened to that? Um, we haven't had an update about the 311 uh, one program um, uh, for a few, few months. Um, that's it's a long-term project. Um, so you know, we, we can certainly get an update on that. I'm happy to, uh, that's actually a question that an alder asked for our leadership uh, meeting on Friday. Um, it's it's gonna take years to put something like that in place to be quite honest. 
Um, and so, you know, I do think ultimately we absolutely need a three one one program, um, but that's not happening anytime soon, to be quite honest. Um, and so, I think as Alder Foster pointed out, this individual could be somebody that ends up going over to the three one one program, um, but in the meantime, um, you know, could act as uh, you know further support. Other other discussion. Alder Foster, go ahead. Uh, Alder Hex. Thanks. Um, I'm thinking about how something like this could work, uh, and struggling honestly. Uh, it, I, I, you know, I we haven't really thought about it, and and Alder Foster admits that you know it's it's really just we're we're looking for ideas, but. Uh, it, it, it seems like it would in in this situation, given our current technological capabilities and such, that it would be an individual alder who <clears throat> would be making a decision. I guess, okay, am I going to forward this request to this person or not, or am I going to take care of it myself? And uh, to me, even that step is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I guess it could save a lot of time. Uh, but, you know, so many of the requests that take a, a lot of bandwidth, I, 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 I think uh, this, this person, let's say, would have a lot of trouble unless they were somebody as experienced as Debbie, who knows a lot of answers to these types of questions. And I think it would take uh, years for someone to build up the knowledge base to, to act as a form of 311 or a Debbie. And uh, it, it, it might not be worth the effort, but I don't really have a better answer of how do we, how do we provide more support for alders in this arena. So those are my first thoughts. I'm just thinking aloud. Alder, heck, you realize we ask new, new alders to figure that role out pretty quickly too, though, right? Vice President Curry. Well, they're not Debbie. <laughs> um, I, I know we're in like comments. I, I, I'm not sure if it's appropriate if uh, it's easier to ask questions of Debbie and then even Karen, because essentially this uh, role would fall under Karen's supervision, or is that going to be part of this? No, oh, yeah, that, it's free flowing. You're, you're welcome to engage anybody you wish. Um, they don't have to answer you, but you're welcome to engage anybody you wish. Sure. So thank you. Um, thanks. And hi, Debbie and Karen. Um, is it easier to ask questions or would you kind of, like to take us through your thoughts about this opportunity. Sure, go ahead and ask any questions you have. I'll do my best to answer. Um, so considering, I think, what President Furman just said regarding we do expect alders to jump into this and assume knowledge very quickly, but you've also been a around a very long time and seen different alders come and go. Um, how do you see this supporting maybe some of your capacity of doing and holding some of the things depending on who's in office. Um, and I mean, it's putting you on the spot, but uh, is it, are you excited, nervous, conflicted? <laughs> I certainly understand that the need is there for it. I do agree with Alder Heck that the Alder is still going to have to go into their email or voicemail messages and decide which ones to send. So it doesn't take all the work off of the Alder. Um, but I do know that it takes a lot of time because I see the calls that and emails that I get and how much time they take. So I know it does consume a part of an alder's day. Um, the one thing that I would mention is I, I do have alders that come to me and ask me who certain questions should be referred to. And 
they do that, I know, because they like to be the one to then provide the answer to their constituent and kind of have that personal touch with it rather than just having me take it over. But again, that's going to vary from alder to alder. And there's it's just difficult to predict who's going to want what and how much they will utilize the service. I know that's a terribly vague answer. I'm sorry. Well, that helps. Um, okay, Karen, I have a couple questions for you. And oh, I was going to mute. I'm mute. I think this may be also like being um, the council vice president and being a, just naturally connecting more with you in that role. Um, conversations happening, like for instance, about moving offices, and um, we've already increased office staff more so than historically from currently we have five more positions and this would be five including yours six okay so six total including you um <laughs> kind of same question that i had for debbie of you know excitement nervousness conflicted but also um, as you have been onboarding most recently the community engagement strategist and then needing to rehire for the legislative analyst assist, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, do you see opportunities to weave some of this in? So like, for instance, I know Larissa took over doing the um, weekly summary that that's sent out. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yes. So, right. So we have, in theory, five right now. We had five for a moment, people. Um, and as you mentioned, and I mentioned in my update coming up in a little bit, we're, we're unfortunately hiring again for that fifth person. Um, and then this would be six. Uh, I know in our new space, which we're hoping to be able to access by the end of the year, beginning of next year, they're not making promises, but you know that we're crossing fingers for that, that we will have enough workspaces for six people. We did add some extra workspaces when, um, when we were building the plans so that we could account for some growth. Um, as it stands right now, Debbie can attest to the uh, state of the, of the office. It's... Um, we all have hybrid schedules because it's it's uh, quite tight. And um, even with two people in the office, somebody usually goes into the conference room to take a, take a meeting, et cetera. So our current situation um, space-wise is very tight. I, I couldn't imagine uh, fitting a sixth person, especially a person with phone duty. Um, I think we'd have to really think hard about how to, I mean, I really think we would we would probably have to take take away the older lounge and there may be some expense um, related to that. So I have some trepidation because of the space, um, partially because of the space. Um, and then another, I'm conflicted as well because I don't know how often folks are in the enviable, enviable position of being offered additional support, right? So I certainly don't want to sound unappreciative of, of such a thing because I think it's it's wonderful that you're thinking of of um, how to enhance the office so um, but uh, we're in a we're in a strange position where we've got new people we had two new people so you know they're coming uh, now we have the one coming up only on three months and um, and then we'll hopefully be able to bring another one on board and then get them up to speed. And I, I can say that right now, I just don't know what our, our complete capacity is because we um, haven't really been able to push, push the limits of, of what we can do as folks are, are getting onboarded. Um, so I, I have a lot of, I, I, do, I do have a big question mark. I, I, I imagine that we will have some, some additional significant additional capacity between those two um, new uh, positions as they get their feet under them. Um, so I'm in a, I, I can't, you know, if we were an established team, I could tell you, you know, um, but unfortunately we're just not established yet. Um, 
in terms of, let's see, I think you had, there was one other thing. Hmm. Um, Looking at any opportunities oh, yeah. if you're establishing staff to weave in some of the yeah. topics that have been brought up. I do think so, actually. That's one thing um, I had done for a previous alder um, in my previous role. Um, I and then I think I think even as I continued on in this role, I had received uh, a number of constituent um, issues, and I I helped shepherd them through to the correct staff and make sure things, and then follow up on things and so on and so forth. And so I can see uh, the legislative analyst being able to pick up some of that work. I know Debbie um, picks it up as it comes along. I think the emails in particular, I feel more confident that we can weave more of that into our existing, if we are fully staffed, um, our existing work. If you um, are discussing, um, thinking about some kind of a central call line, I think it's maybe, it's a little, maybe a little more, a little more challenging, a little more, I'm not as quick to, make a statement on handle, you know, folding that in. Um, so I guess I, I'm, a, you know, I'm not, I just, a, a calls, I'm just not sure yet. Um, one other concern we have is that we've discussed this possibilities and thinking about these sorts of things and, and what, what could, what could work. And one of the concerns we have is that um, it seems from council to council and alder to alder, it varies drastically as to, the type of support the alder wants from staff in, in these particular areas. And I I um I want to make sure that if we do build a position, that we build a position that makes sense, right? It has an internal logic to it, obviously, and has has a I I I want to make sure that even if 311 comes or something changes or this this uh, next group is really independent and is not interested or something, you know, I want to make sure that that position, that that person who would take that position would be, um, you know, it would, that the position would make sense, you know, from a, from a retention and employer, you know, perspective, I want that to make sense. So it's kind of, I'm, I'm really happy to hear your thoughts though. Um, I was looking forward to this because I really would love to hear everybody's ideas on this issue. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. I'm taking up so much time. I have one like final question and it's very much more on the spot. Um, considering all the conversation and, you know, experience and knowledge you have in your roles and then balancing like council office stuff and all their stuff. Um, are there any ideas that haven't been thrown out on the table that you would like us to consider as part of this conversation or just with having increased funds to do some of the things that we know need to be done? I do have some thoughts. I don't know if Debbie, do you have any thoughts on that one? Nothing springs to mind at the moment. Okay. So there are some things I'm thinking about that I have on the horizon. And excuse me, and that it may or may not be appropriate for this discussion, but I'll just throw that out there since you since you raised the issue. Um, I think we are going to be doing a lot more with BCC admin support and um, training both of alders and BCC staff members, et cetera, et cetera. And I I do think that there very well may be a need at some point for additional staff support in those areas because if the council continues down the path that it's kind of set in motion um, there will be uh, there will be need for for support on those things so that's the one thing that I'm really kind of keeping an eye out for um, it's not maybe tomorrow but it's it's not I don't think it's that far away unless something drastically changes with how we handle all of those things so I'll throw that out there. Thank you, Vice President Curry. Uh, Alder Foster, go ahead. 
Thanks, President Furman. Um, Karen, I guess to maybe a follow up to kind of that last point. I mean, part of what I'm trying to tee up here is, I guess, in a way, a broader conversation about additional administrative support. I I hear you, you know, describing we've got sort of new positions. We're still, you know, just barely had it fully staffed, and then not, and and you know, maybe if and when that's all done. There will be some capacity. I don't hear you saying there. you expect there will likely be capacity for all 20 alders to be able to forward all emails that would apply or voicemails. Um, and maybe there's some other duties, including BCC support work, um, that you could uh, use additional support for. I think we know all of this sort of stuff takes an eternity. So what we're talking about right now is should we consider a budget amendment to create a new position, a new administrative support position within the council office that could offer, uh, you know, sort of higher level support in the things that we talked about, but also could, um, you know, could cover other things like BCC admin support, et cetera. You know, I think of the TFOGS recommendations and what we learned from other cities and the amount of administrative support staff that other common councils have across the nation. And even with our new um, new staff, we're still very, very slim. So, you know, I, I'm, I guess, I don't think we need to have everything completely laid out before we um, decided to move forward with increasing our, our administrative support within the council office. But, you know, you've got the kind of best take on that, I think of any of us at this point, if the ask from the common council was, we would like the common council office staff to be able to support all 20 alders to the extent that they want for forwarding any and all constituent emails to get the support that's needed and have a phone number that is published for all alders that want it, that would be answered by council staff and would and the council staff would be able to help those constituents um, whenever possible and if needed schedule time with the alder to speak directly with the alder what what would that take from your perspective do you feel confident that you could try doing that with current staffing levels or would you need additional staff in order to to accomplish that i yeah so i think that's a good question i just let me get, I want to think, I'm thinking about a couple of things and I also want Debbie to weigh in on this. Um, I feel like this phone issue is is where I get a little bit, um, I get a little bit, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say stuck, but I, I feel like we need to think through the, you know, what this will mean for us, both even physically in the office, you know. Um, I, yeah, that's one thing I was thinking about. If the council comes and says, we want all of this, we want these additional services, we want this enhanced support um, to the extent that you're saying, you're talking about all 20 alders. Um, it sounds like, and I, it's hard to not, without knowing what emails you have, but if you're talking about half of your emails, three fourths of your emails times 20 plus instead of getting calls directly you get calls we we you get calls to the office we take voicemails pass them back to you in the cases where we can't handle them um you know they they want to talk to their alder uh yeah it's it's really and then i think you mentioned scheduling as well um if if we if we times 20 i think that that's fair to say that we would need additional support and then we will need to build out the office. Even unfortunate, the timing is is difficult because I hate to spend money on building out the office when we're building a whole new office. Um, but yeah, Debbie, I wanted you to to just weigh in a little bit about this phone um, issue. I know we had talked internally about how many times the people calling want to talk to their alder, so there will be a. A situation most likely it sounds like where we will be taking voicemail taking messages and then handing them back to the alders which i'm not sure is exactly the everybody's i'm not sure anyway i just if you have any thoughts on on any of this debbie please weigh in yeah there there are is a certain percentage of people who call who even if i can solve their problem or someone in another city agency can solve their issues, they still want to talk to their alder. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what that percentage is. I don't think it's particularly high, probably less than 25%, but there would be some of that. 
And also, I agree with what Karen said, that if we were going to be asked to supply the level of support that Alder Foster just described for all 20 Alders, I do think it would take additional staff, admin support staff in the office. Thank, thanks, both of you. Um, I guess I'd, I would just say, I think, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of opportunity to talk through in more detail kind of how this would work, you know, what would exactly be in versus out, but just a couple of things as I've thought through them. Um, number one, I would love tomorrow to swap out my elder phone number that's published on the website and have a number that is answered by council staff. And I would say in my experience, I'm guessing it is probably at least 80% of the calls that I get the people would be thrilled if somebody were able to answer the call when they were calling, because I, I can very rarely do that uh, in all honesty. So they're going to go to voicemail for me. Um, and, and yes, there will be some folks that are going to be insistent on talking with me. And I would really love support for having them uh, get, getting, uh, you know, 15 minutes set on my calendar and where we can do that because the number of times that I call somebody back from a voicemail and then I have to leave a voicemail and we do that sort of thing. Um, it, it really is for the, for the, for a relatively small volume of phone calls that I get, it's a inordinate amount of work. And I think it would be a tremendous help to not have to manage that um, as an alder. I think with, you know, with this not being considered a full-time job and most elders having uh, other commitments throughout the day, I know there's a lot of folks that cannot be available to answer their, their elder phone uh, when folks are calling. So I, I do, I would love to see that prioritized, number one. And number two, um, I, I think I get, Alder Heck, what you're describing around, you know, sort of how useful would this be in relation to emails? Um, you know, what I am imagining and anticipating is, you know, right now, if I if I were to ask for support on on something, you know, I also want to make sure that the resident is feeling like they're not getting dumped on somebody else. Um, you know, it's important that they're feeling like there's a connection with their elder, et cetera. I feel confident that we could create a system where it would be both super easy for um, alders to do this in, in an ideal scenario for me, it would literally be forwarding this to an individual or a mailbox or whatever it is without even having to put anything in there. I mean, literally from my phone or wherever else, I read the email, I see that it's something that could be handled by this person, I forward it, and that person understands completely what the expectations are, and they're able to respond to the constituent, put me on copy and say, oh, good afternoon, you know, whoever, I'm helping Alder Foster um, with this. I'm going to connect you with this person, et cetera, et cetera. And I think we can accomplish in a really, in a way that's very low effort for the Alder and very high touch and high customer service for residents um, and make this happen. I also think it opens up the door to, at a later date, pilot having a more centralized thing. We could publish on all of our web pages. Sure, here's the email to talk directly with um, Alder Foster, or if you have a general city concern, you can you can get a faster response by just um, emailing here instead. So I, th I think there's ways in the future that this could be incorporated. Um, and I guess lastly, I'll just say, I just have like, zero doubts that um, if we added another position to the council office, um, that it would be worthwhile for the common council and that we would find plenty of work to keep all of our council staff busy, um, both in terms of constituent contact and in any other um, duties that we're already expecting of staff that there just simply isn't capacity for. So I, I guess I'll just leave it at there for the moment. Thanks. Thank you, Alder. Alder Tischler. Yeah, actually, I just want to echo uh, a lot of what uh, Alder Foster said. It's um, kind of in the, in the same same mindset with uh, it's 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 being available during the day, having a person be able to pick up the phone when people call, um, but then also it's just scheduling a time when you when to uh, uh, to be able to get to get back to to somebody. Um, and I also, you know, my day job, I'm 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 support staff, so I I. I I feel the the pain. I know it's I know it's it's uh, it's 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 not uh, it's not easy feeling your uh, I mean during the day on on call twenty four twenty four seven um, you know I I'm 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 fine with that. Just it just I'm, it's that constant 
conflicting with do I pick up do I pick up I have two phones I pick up the red phone or the the blue phone um, and uh, so having having a, a person on the on the other end to answer for somebody I think for a number of, of constituents in in district 11 um, I think it would be a a, a nice extra a touch but I realize that that's that's asking asking a lot of of current staff so having having more all in support um, I actually have to run and get some food I haven't eaten yet in a couple hours or so but I Thank everybody for giving the opportunity to talk, and I will look forward to seeing everybody in the Thanks future. for joining us, Alder Tischler. Appreciate it. All right, um, I put up my hand because I wanted to get in the queue and talk. Um, so I just want to make some 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 thoughts about this. It, it's it's interesting to talk to Alder Foster about this because his um, his experience with constituent services, um, quite frankly, is different than mine. Um, I don't get the volume he gets, to be quite honest. Um, there are emails I get that um, uh, very easily can be taken care of by, um, you know, a support staff opposed to me, um, where they, you know, they're asking me something simple about, um, you know, is it rent assistance or when their trash is going to be picked up or, you know, why why didn't their street get snow plowed, et cetera, that, that as Alder, I don't need to do. Um, as, as Alder Foster, suggest something like this and um, I'm, I'm supportive of something like this I want to point out this isn't going to benefit me um, I'm, I'm, I'm all, I only got a few more months in this job um, but I do recognize when you do this job um, we need we need to make this job more accessible we've had a ton of talks about this through TFOGs here at CCEC proposals that have been in front of the council um, but at, at the end of the day um, alders have a limited amount of time um, it's not a full-time job it's part-time um, it takes a lot of time a lot of effort to put in into this job I just think um, consider constituent service questions um, really should be low on the list of where alders are spending time um, when those questions can easily be answered by support staff. Don't get me wrong, somebody wants to talk to you about you know, a piece of legislation, um, you're going to want to engage, you're going to want to talk to them. But um, if I have a limited amount of time, I, I, you know, or an alder has a limited amount of time, I'd rather them be looking at the agendas, understanding what items um, they need to understand more, talking to staff about stuff, coming up with new legislation, which is an incredibly time-consuming job and working with staff on that, et cetera. So it really comes down to, you know, I, I recognize that, again, there are, each district is different, but anything we can do to support alders um, for them to be able to focus more on um, the legislative part of the job um, and, and get support, I think, um, would be helpful. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what the system looks like. Um, and so I appreciated the discussion tonight, but I really do think we need to be thinking of, of ways to make this job more accessible. Um, not everybody is available 40 hours a week to do this job, and we certainly don't get paid enough to do this job 40 hours a week. So, um, you know, the whatever stuff we can legitimately outsource, we should be looking at doing that. And I think some of these constituent things and being able to, as Alder Foster said, forward certain things um, off. Even keeping track of that takes a lot of time. Um, I'm sure you know alders know, like you know, somebody mails you about something, and a staff member doesn't get back to you, and you have to follow up. Um, that that that's a lot of time that you're that alders end up having to spend, or in some cases, alders don't even bother. Um, they have you have districts where literally this stuff just gets ignored, where an all you know somebody sends something to their alder, and the alder just doesn't have time, and and they ignore it. And so the fact that we have such different levels of uh, engagement from alders and and from constituents. Um, anything we could do to simplify that'd be great. I absolutely love and appreciate Alder Vitiver bringing up the Fruit One One and what the heck's going on with that. We will get an update, um, but every time I've seen any scope of that, I mean, we're talking about you know a very 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 large substantial investment that um, I desperately think we need to make as a city, um, but just isn't going to happen overnight. And so I think this is a good step towards um, making this job more equitable. Alder Heck. Thanks. Uh, your kind of summary of the situation there, President Furman, uh, indicates why you're president and I'm not. Uh, you did a good job. Uh, I, uh, I I appreciated what you had to say and, and also what Alder Foster had to say. And I'm just going to briefly describe uh, what I receive and how I would envision this potentially helping me. I, I totally get that it could help some Alders, but I think it would not help me I actually get very few, um, not very few, but not that many uh, requests that I think uh, staff could easily answer. I get theses and 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 you know very complicated input, and perhaps uh, uh, constituents have been enabled to engaging in that manner. But I wouldn't want to 
ask staff to to take care of the majority of the of the contacts that I get. And I, I actually get very not not too many phone calls because partially because my voicemail message says if you want a quicker response, email me. And so I think a fair number of people take that hint. Not all, but um, but it, it that kind of leads me to what what you were talking about, President Furman, that it just varies so much by district and by alder. So, and, and whatever we come up with, and I do think as Alder Foster said, it could be really great for some alders. Uh, you know, we, we have to recognize that it's not, it, it's gonna be very difficult to provide this service for every district that's, that's gonna take some big load off. Uh, but I still think it's worth thinking about. Thanks. Thank you, Alder. Heck, are there any other questions, thoughts, comments? Karen, go ahead. So I hearing folks, you know, honestly, I think hearing folks describe the types of calls and emails they get is really helpful um, to give us kind of a window into what's, uh, you know, what we're talking about here. Um, because that's another possibility. And, and I don't know, for example, if it's five districts that, that, that take up the bulk of this for, let's say, uh, you know, do those five districts provide enough work? You know what I mean? For a, a, a coherent PD, for someone to do that work? Maybe, maybe. Um, and, and I wish there was a way, I wish there was a, I wish we could tap somebody with the amount of experience that Debbie has uh, for like a pilot to see what we're dealing with, you know, but I just can't come up with, because unfortunately the administrative, the A team, the, you know, the, the, the float team, they're always really busy around election time. Um, and there's, and there's, uh, you know, cause that'd be the first person I think, you know, maybe we could get one of, one of them to, to, to pilot this and see what we're talking about for volume. But unfortunately, I think they're probably not even going to be available until after the election. But I just, I wish there was some way for us to get a better handle on what we're, what we're talking about in the aggregate. Um, just, just some thoughts to throw out there. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Heck. Sorry to speak so much. I was just going to say, Karen, that uh, what Alder Foster mentioned about, uh, you know, potentially this person doing BCC admin support and things might uh, provide, uh, you know, a, a rationale for for doing something bigger. But uh, so there, there, are, there are possibilities. I think. Thanks, Alder Foster. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, I guess I'm just going to kind of put this question out to the world here, but um, I mean, I, I'm happy to, you know, ask ask to put a budget amendment together, um, forward it on. Um, I think you know that is obviously a high threshold to get that approved. Um, if there's not, you know, a, a lot of support for it at this time, I don't want to waste anybody's um, time with it, um, and. If we're, if I'm if I'm not going to do that, and if we aren't going to um, you know approve such a thing, then I guess I am. I, I would ask uh, our chief of staff. I mean, what what do you recommend? How do we get from where we're at to being able to answer these questions better? Because I don't. I mean, it, to me, it's just a hundred percent clear. This is this is the best thing the city could do for me right now in my role is to for me to be able to get support on these things and I am I feel confident that the person that comes after me at least in my district is going to be in a very similar situation and I know there are other elders today that are in this situation that would really benefit from it so how do we get from where we're at to I guess number one identifying what the actual expected workload would be and whether it's something that that our current st office staffing can handle or if we need to advocate for an additional position, because I don't, to me, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for us to do nothing and, um, you know, just sit here and then all the all the, the alders today, all the incoming alders are just gonna basically be in the same boat that I've been in and the rest of us have been in. So, I mean, do you have thoughts about how we do work on a pilot, how we work on getting data collection to answer some of these questions so we can make an informed decision if people are not feeling confident to add a position at this point? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a really good point. And I, I think we could start out, um, I don't want to commit anybody to anything until I have a conversation internally, but one possibility would be to start out to, to reach out to each of the alders, have a conversation, you know, about what they're, what they're dealing with. Get, try to get some some sense of scope and also how they would they take it you know if this was in place when they started would they be would they be happy um to take advantage of it you know so um that's the first thing that i i guess would make sense uh and that's something that we could do pretty pretty briskly um i don't know debbie what do you think about about that or do you have any other ideas because I don't, I, I mean, of course I'm tempted to give it a trial run, but then the problem is that then the phone calls all come to Debbie and then Debbie is inundated potentially with phone calls. And so that that's why I'm hesitating on that path because I'm worried about, I don't know what to expect and Debbie has other duties. Um, so that's why I'm not just jumping right to like, let's try it. <laughs> you know, uh, Debbie, do you have any thoughts about how to get us somewhere well how long are you thinking of for a pilot i mean that's a great question we're in a strange spot right now because we're you know we're gearing up for orientation and for onboarding and we're spending all of our time you know our extra i don't know what to call it time when we're not on the other tasks we're we're spending on dealing with all of that um and so uh, you know if i wasn't thinking about that if we were in a you know if we weren't in that situation, I thought, you know, a month, you know, a month of, of trial maybe would be a, a good amount. And we would know a lot probably in that month, especially if if uh, we got half the council willing to, to send us their emails and to and to set up the phone with them. Right. Um, but I don't want us to overcommit. I know that's always a problem. Right. We want to we want to get you what you what you need. Um, but. But yeah, President Furman, you might be able to help us with that. Yeah, that I, and, I, and I want to be careful about putting, right. um, uh, continuing to put Karen and Debbie on the spot. So I'm probably going to um, to suggest that we have some some further offline discussions about it. Um, Alder Foster have, uh, is um, pretty in tune with um, uh, the, the feedback he's hearing here tonight, as am I. And I think I think we could probably have a much smaller group talk about this and see if something makes sense. I think we're in an awkward period too, where we're about to, you know, literally flip 50% of the, the council. I mean, you know, we're going to have all these new members coming, and so there is an opportunity to establish new standards um, if we wanted to. Um, but you know, I I I think I want to hold off putting Debbie and Karen on the spot much more. Um, <clears throat> But uh, uh, Alder Foster, is there more you wanted to ask or say? Uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, and you know, certainly not trying to put anybody on the spot, and um, would would be happy to um, follow up in this conversation um, offline. I, I the last thing I'll just put out there is I think another way to consider it is I, I don't think we have to go whole hog even for a month or whatever else we don't have to have all 20 doing it at once um i would be the first one to volunteer myself to to, to start forwarding things um you know see what it would take to get a, a you know republish a different phone number and you know we could try it with one alder or two or three so i think there's ways to, to manage it um at a slower scale that we could then try and extrapolate a little bit so but we, we can um we can talk a little bit uh, more about it offline thanks Thank you, Alder Foster, uh, Vice President Curry. Thank you. Um, I was actually going to ask or like respond to Alder Foster's kind of what are solutions. Um, is this something that we could just pick up later? Do you, because we are turning over and like, for instance, Alder Heck, President Furman, Alder Foster won't be here past April would it be more appropriate to like formally refer or like make sure that we talk about this before? Like, cause I think there's, for me personally, I don't feel there's enough to make me comfortable to vote this in right now. Um, but I do think it's worthwhile uh, reconvening or re my words are terrible talking about this later when <laughs> we know of who the next cohort will be. Um, hopefully by then our office staff will be fully staffed and obviously onboarding will be tailoring off instead of going up. Um, 
And I feel like it'd be more appropriate to reconvene around a time. So I guess I'm seeking advice on what would be the best steps to make sure we don't lose sight of the topic. Sure. So I, I mean, I'll give you my two cents. I mean, I think, you know, we, we have an opportunity now where there's some money in the council budget that we could allocate towards this. And that's, that's, that is a unique opportunity um, that, that's worth noting. Um, you know, a new council certainly can talk about this. I think you're going to run into a situation where you're going to have alders that come into the job, um, be in the job for two weeks and assume that they have all the answers. Um, I will tell you, I've been in this job for over four years and I don't have all the answers. I don't know how how to do things uh, you know, uh, radically differently or radically better. Um, so at some point, you know, we, we just, we need to try things and figure things out. Um, and so, you know, I, it certainly can wait. I think that that probably will end up being the case. I'm not sure there are 15 votes for this idea anyway, especially based on some of the feedback we're hearing this evening. Um, I, you know, I just think we need to continue to forever and ever talk about how to make this job more equitable and, and work better uh, for alders and the community. Um, as I said, there are people that just get ignored by alders because the alders don't have the bandwidth for it. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we need to do better. Um, so uh, that probably didn't give you an answer, <laughs> Vice President Gary, but that's sort of what I'm thinking. I, I don't think there's a right time. It could be now. It could be later. It's it's the will of the body at some point. Yes, I'm sorry. Let me confirm. In, in terms of this has been a topic on CCEC's agenda and we're an advisory, would it, how to not lose sight of it, like should it be placed on, like should it be referred to a date, um, like, there's no there's no action item. I mean, we probably could could just refer this to another date, and then you know the the next uh, president um, can decide whether or not they want to bring it up for discussion. Um, I'm sure we could certainly entertain that. That's not a bad idea if that's the direction we want to go. Um, but you know, we could, I, I can also talk to whoever the next president is when that's the case. Say, hey, um, you know, would you please consider this if we don't take any action? Um, but I think you know all these ideas. Obviously, you know, we should never stop trying to make this job better, even if we don't. Don't accomplish it. I was reading uh, an Alder's um, campaign material, and they were still trying to get the three-year terms. Um, and I, you know, I'm glad somebody is trying to continue to do that because I think that's it's worth, you know, continuing these threads. Thank you for the clarification. And I'm I see Alder Foster and Alder Madison's hands up, but I'd I'd be willing to make a recommendation to refer it, and also like. I guess it would be to refer to the next CCEC, but also I don't know if we could ask that um, representatives of this CCEC could provide that presentation to the new CCEC. Um, that would be what I would like to see happen, but I'll, I'll wait to also see what Alder Madison and Foster have to say. Thank you, Vice President Curry. Alder Madison. Uh, thank you. So I just, let me, oh, I'm always trying to figure out how to lower my hand. Okay. so. Um, I just want to, so I'm just going to be transparent. So as a new, new auditor, you know, I think I'm like two months, three weeks or so in. And I definitely, when I got started, because I'm a process checklist sort of person, I definitely, those first couple of weeks spent a lot of time hitting up Debbie and Karen, just the office period for just, just, just process things because I didn't get like a, you know, a stack of, documents and say, hey, this is how you do this. And this is where you go for that. So I, you know, sent them a bunch of random emails for things. Now today, I mostly reach out when I need to make sure I am uh, reaching out to the correct staff person. For the most part, I'm able to manage it. I'm maybe 20 or so emails behind. But when I scroll through, nothing is like emerging, you know, emergencies or whatever. And so, um, so, I'm, so I want to say that. And then I want to say, the reason I raise my hands because when you all are talking about this, like I don't really hear myself as a newer person, and then another, you know, another group of potentially newer folks coming in, or there will be new folks. So when you're having the discussion and plan is, I would love to be. I know I'm not on this committee first and foremost, but I still want to make sure that at minimum I can share my feedback because it's it's important. You know, like we're new. I am a system, pro I'm a process person. Like I'm always thinking about improving processes, especially to serve folks who are underrepresented across the city. That is what I commit my life to. And so just as a person who's only two and a half months in, I'm hearing you talk in this great discussion, but I'm also not necessarily hearing my experience as someone who's like two and a half months in being sort of, you know, not saying that you guys aren't considering it, but I just don't hear it in the, 
what might come of this process. So I'm just hopefully hoping for a way to be included in the discussion about what this looks like going forward. So that's my two cents. Alder Madison, um, you are um, all. Uh, you know, most of this discussion will take place either here at CCEC or uh, you know, our council. Um, you are, you are always welcome to participate. If there are more things you want to share with us this evening, as we're trying to figure out what the next steps are, I, I encourage you to do so. Um, I think you know there, your unique experience of being new um, and just being in a different district than everybody else. Um, you know, we all have our unique experiences. Um, that's what, that's why this item is on the agenda. It's not just for you know CCEC members, but for any elders that that want to come and participate to, to give their feedback. So so never be shy about that. Oh yeah, to yep. um, yeah. Uh, but you know, I think. I think if this, if anything goes forward uh, with this, whether it's in this council or or, or the the next council, um, I expect there to be you know pretty lengthy discussions on what that actually looks like and how to get there. Um, if there's feedback you want to share directly um, with either Alder Foster or myself, please feel free. Um, but you're also more than welcome to continue to participate here and whenever it's a topic here. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. But the, again, those are the sort of things like all of those process things as a new auditor, I don't know. You know, I can very well ask and say, hey, what what can and can I do at these meetings where I'm not on a committee, for example? But yeah, I that's a good explanation. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, just, just to think about on a committee, if you're not a member of the committee, the only thing you can't do is vote. But you can ask questions, you can participate. You are you are a non-voting member of every single committee as alder. Gotcha. All righty. That's I mean, I will I think I've shared enough, especially with Debbie and Karen, where they have a, a minimum, they have all my process related questions. Um, but I will reach out to you and Alder Foster or, uh, you know, uh, President Furman and Alder Foster to share some additional feedback just from my perspective and from my district. Appreciate that. Thank you. Alder Foster, go ahead. Uh, thanks. Um, I, I was also just going to clarify a little bit for um, for everybody, and, and maybe to your um, question, Vice President Curry. Uh, um, I mean, so th this is just a discussion item on here. I mean, it really was my goal to, to have this discussion, so it's been really helpful. Um, it's this isn't something we actually have to take any action on, and I, I guess I would recommend that we don't refer this since it is just a discussion item um you know to a future ccec i would def i think it is a worthwhile conversation to continue with the new council um you know at this point i'm not planning on on uh, working on introducing an actual budget amendment or doing anything else more formal with it um so i i guess i would just say you know all y'all that are going to be here next time good luck and um i think you should have the conversations and um, but I, I don't I don't think it makes sense to refer this discussion item um, to some future date. Um, I, I would also just say, you know, part of why I, I kind of pressed to have this conversation and part of why I, th I think there sort of was an opportunity here is because these two year terms, you know, come and go super quick. There's going to be a bazillion priorities that you all are going to deal with. And most likely, nobody is going to actually deal with this question, and there isn't going to be any action taken. Um, but but maybe I'll be surprised. Um, and so, I you know, as as President Furman said before, this is obviously not about me. It's not going to help me at all. Um, but I'm just really trying to kind of take my knowledge from the time that I've spent on council, um, and you know, do what I can to make it better for the folks that are coming after me. And in my opinion, this is one of the best things that um, that we could do. To, to have more support for alders and to make it better. Um, but I, I will leave it up to the next council um, to kind of figure that out and maybe they'll agree or disagree on it. And if they agree, um, I'm hopeful that they can um, they can prioritize it and get it put into a future budget and, and make it happen. Um, and in the meanwhile, I'd be happy to have some additional conversations offline and even work on a little bit of a pilot or something um, if that information is helpful for uh, for the future council to to consider taking action on it. Thanks. Thank you, Alder Foster. Debbie, go ahead. Yeah, for what it's worth, I just wanted to say that in the length of time I've worked in the council office, I have seen over the years how the demands on alders have done nothing but steadily increase. Um, I think they get many more constituent contacts now than they used to. There's more expectations from neighborhood associations. And so even if this isn't something that we do in this moment, 
I do think it's eventually coming down the road somewhere because it doesn't seem like the public is supportive of a full-time council where um, each person would have their own staff to deal with these kind of things, kind of like they do at the state level. But um, for a part-time job for someone who's trying to have balance in their life with work and family and other things, I can really see how it's a hardship for for alders. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate that. And obviously, we all very much appreciate what you do to support us. So thank you so much. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, any other thoughts, questions, discussions? I, I really appreciate this discussion tonight. Um, it's, it's really helpful to hear people's different perspectives. Um, I will forever be frustrated that in this job, there are so many things where there's no right answer um, but such such as this job um, but uh, you know do do hope to uh, that this conversation continues um, but not sure how much it's going to continue in the next few months but it sounds like this will be something that uh, hopefully at least the next council uh, takes up and discusses more all right um, with that in mind it's late um, we've done we've done a lot of work today um, in this committee um, uh, if there's no objection, I'd like to move on to the council update um, and only, I mean, it's brief, but I'll only just ask people if they have any questions about um, the, the, the update. It was sent out earlier. It's brief. Um, are there any questions about 75427? Not seeing any, you're welcome to reach out to Karen and ask her if you have any questions. Um, I, I'm not prepared to really talk too much about future agenda items other than to tell you that we did have some items that were pointed out this evening that will be on future agenda items um, uh, about the internship program. Um, if we look at the list really quickly, let me just see if there's any other big call outs. Um, while I pull up the list, um, just to give people an opportunity to, to hear quickly what's on my mind for future meetings, is there anything anybody would like to see on our next agenda or any future agendas? Um, you know, we are we are getting towards the end of this uh, CCEC um, uh, term, um, but we certainly I'm certainly open, uh, you know, continuing uh, discussions. Um, I do know that at some point we're going to have um, an update on um, the orientation that we could provide folks. Um, an email went out um, asking people some details on that. I'm hoping that at some point in the near future, at least um, give some sort of uh, detail on some of the behind the scenes work done on committee stuff. Um, anything else people, uh, if, if you can't think of things, it's, it's late. I'm sure a lot of people are hungry. Send me an email if you want to see something on our future agenda. Um, but I do, do appreciate everybody's participation today. This was a, a long, uh, packed meeting. Um, so thank you, everybody. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Without any objection, I'm going to assume unanimous consent. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you so much.